Welcome to the SRAM 971 sound level meter. This is a brief description of some of the features and operational methods that the instrument uses to see how it works. Once you switch on the instrument by pressing the shift and start stop buttons together, just press and let go uh, and after about five or six seconds the screen will come up as shown above. This is the standby screen uh, and we'll take a look at uh, what it's showing us in a little bit more detail here. The top line shows various icons about the instrument. The icon here indicates that the SD card is fitted in the instrument ready to store the results. The open square here indicates the instrument is currently in the stop mode or standby mode, not actually recording anything. This position is where the battery would normally be indicated. Uh, since we're connected to the computer, uh, to an external power source, then the uh, sound level meter indicates uh, a PC here. This is the real-time clock, the internal clock inside the instrument, which is currently showing us the hours and minutes. The main part of the display is the instantaneous sound level, and the sound level currently is the A-weighted fast sound level in decibels. Underneath the main display here, we have eight operational keys. This is the escape key, this is the enter key, this is the up key, the down key, the left key, the right key, a shift key, and the start stop key. Everything that we do with the instrument is controlled from these eight keys. The operation is basically to bring up a menu and to make selections from the menu to control how the instrument works. To start the menu we press shift and enter together and here is our menu. After switching on the SAN 971 sound level meter, after about 10 seconds the instrument finishes its startup routine and arrives at the standby screen shown here with the instantaneous sound level. Operation of the instrument is uh, straightforward. We control the setup of the instrument and what it will do for us using uh, a menu. We access the menu by pressing shift and the menu button. Here's the menu on screen showing the different sections that the uh, uh, settings are arranged in. Function measurement itself, display of the answers, the storage of results into the files, the other settings of the instrument, and some auxiliary setups, and finally the report section. Let's look at uh, each of those in a little bit more detail to see what the instrument can do for us. So when the instrument is first assembled and switched on, it is in the simple mode of operation. We go to the instrument menu, press enter, start with the top choice in the instrument menu which is the user interface and press menu and you'll see that currently we have three choices, a simple start and stop mode of operation where Literally, we just start and stop a recording that has been previously set up. In the simple mode, some of the options that are less popular are uh, hidden from the user to keep things simple. And the advanced mode switches everything on to allow us to make all of the changes that we want. Let's turn on the advanced mode by going down to advance with the arrow keys and pressing enter. That has now selected and uh, stepped back to the previous instrument main menu. So let's go back from this menu to the main menu and we'll look at some of the things in a little bit more detail. First of all in the measurement of uh, sound, we may want to switch on the dosimeter mode. This is in the function menu. 
in the measurement function and you'll see it listed here at the bottom of the list. Simply click the down arrow button to select, to highlight it, press the right button to select this choice and press enter to save and step back. The instrument is now set up in the dosimeter mode to enable us to change thresholds, criterion levels, exchange rates, all the normal things that we would want to be able to control for our measurement. In making the measurement, we select measurement, press enter. We have some general settings. So for example, there is a delay control, which enables the instrument to momentarily, in this case, wait for a second before the measurement begins after the start button is selected. The synchronization is off, meaning that the instrument will begin immediately. The control is selected. We have uh, an integration period for the whole of the measurement that we can adjust to either a fixed time. Uh, for example, here the integration period is shown as uh, eight hours. The measurement, the overall measurement, will start when the user presses the start button and continue for up to eight hours when it will stop and finish. If we want to change this time period, we can use the left or the right keys to select through the offerings that we have, like this. Let's set the instrument back to eight hours. We're asking it to do one repeat cycle, so the meter will simply begin and run for one eight-hour interval of time to take the measurements, a typical work cycle. Uh, we have the opportunity to select pauses, but we will not do that this time. There are five pauses available to tell the instrument to stop recording uh, at times if we know when uh, breaks are, for example. For environmental measurements, we have uh, daytime control, which we're not going to use. Uh, and we need to just make sure that the integration for the time average level is set to the linear setting. All of these are good, so we will just simply press the enter to save and return. A control that we will also need to set up is how the three user profiles are configured. So for profile one, we highlight it, press menu, this enables us to select our various uh, filters. The first filter is for the RMS values for our maximums, minimums, time average levels. We have a second separate peak filter. In this case, this is set to the C weighting. And we have a choice for the RMS detector. So if we wanted to change this to the slow setting, we highlight it and press the right arrow key and it changes from fast to slow. Save the settings and we have changed the uh, sound level meter now from being A-weighted fast measurements to A-weighted slow measurements. In the dosimeter mode there are some additional settings here. Let's look at those. So we simply scroll down the screen this is where we find our criterion level. The criterion level is the sound level that represents 100% noise dose. So we can increase this, for example, to set 85 decibels. Step down to set a threshold level, in this case none, or 60, 65, 70, and so on. Let's set this at 75 dB. And the exchange rate. The exchange rate is the doubling, the risk factor that the instrument will use. So this is the 3 dB exchange rate that we have here. Uh, an upper limit time uh, threshold for counting the time that the sound level exceeds a particular sound level. The sound level is 115 here. The instrument will tell us how many minutes and seconds the sound level was above this particular threshold value. 
Once we've set the choices that we need, we simply press enter to save and go back. The instrument has two further profiles, profile 2 and profile 3, that can be set independently. So we have our A filter for our LEQ or average maximum minimum levels. We have a separate filter, again C for our peak measurements. If we want to change this one to fast, um, to slow, excuse me, we select that. Criterion level, we need to make sure that's on 85. And a threshold, this time we'll leave the second profile with no threshold level here so that it will include all the sounds that it measures. And again, uh, our exchange rate 3 dB for our profile 2. So once we have changed everything that we want, save and go back. Same thing for the third profile. If we need to set uh, a third profile with different settings from profile 1 or profile 2, we just enter this menu and make the changes and save them as we've just done now. Other settings here allow us to set uh, an alarm so that the instrument will indicate when the noise dose or the average sound level exceeds a chosen value. We need to control the logging of the instrument, so we will uh, highlight logging, press enter, select logger setup and press enter. We need to make sure that the logger is on, the split is off. The logger step, here this is variable, but one second for the logging step is typical and a good choice to make. During the recording, the 971 will store the sound levels every second for us to see the time variation during the recording. The logger name, this can be adjusted. Simply highlight it, press the right key, and now it's possible to um, change this value to something uh, completely different. If we wanted to set this to 70, for example, we change across and just go through. There we go. And press enter. The file, the next file that we start recording, will be labelled L70 so that we can identify it in the instrument's memory. We need to make sure that our summary results for the whole overall measurement are selected to be on finally in the logger setup. Press enter to save and return. Down to logger results. Press enter and just check and make sure that all of the units for all of the different user configura configurations are all selected. Where the settings are greyed out, this means that in the current mode that we have selected, the dosimeter mode, these choices are not available to us. But the key ones are here, we can see the average level, the LEQ, the minimum, the maximum, the peak level for each of the three profiles. Everything is set by default. So we just press enter to return. Press escape to return. Escape again takes us back to the main menu.